and welcome to Garrity Talks. My name is Lucia Ongai and I am the co-founder of Garrity Awards. Just like the award, this series looks to put in the spotlight and at the center of the conversation, the industry's true change maker. Today, we have three very special guests coming from India to talk about Indian creativity. Kainas Karmakar, the Chief Creative Officer of Ogilvy India. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Hi, hi. <laughs> Palavi Chakravarti, Creative Head of West at TDB Mudra. And uh, Swati Bhattacharya, the Chief Creative Officer at FCB India. Welcome and thanks for joining us today and thanks a lot for your time. So um, let's start straight with the questions. Can you tell us about a little bit about your role and what are the biggest challenges? Who would like to start? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, cool. I'll go first. Um, actually, I think uh, as far as challenges go, it's a pretty easy one today. I'm sure I won't be the only one saying this. So my role is basically to look after the creative product across two offices for the DDB Mudra group in India. And uh, currently, like I said, I don't think I'll be the first one saying this nor the last. Uh, I think that a paucity of talent is uh, one of the biggest challenges we are facing today. I think we're losing talent every day and across levels, youngsters, young talent is so difficult to find. It's almost like, you know, you don't know when you'll chance upon the next good, um, you know, bright spark. And we're losing them to content shops. Advertising is losing talent to OTT, the Indian film industry, clients and marketing roles. You know, so finding people who are in love with the job is tough. And I know I'm probably sounding really rosy and cutesy, but if people love this job, only then will we be able to produce great work. So for me, that is a big challenge. Okay. Swati? No, I completely agree with what uh, Pallavi is uh, said. My job uh, has become a little different uh, over the last few months. I feel, uh, you know, I uh, we split up into different companies out here and uh, now I'm the creative chairperson. So I feel my work has become a little bit more as a someone from the industry so you know i i have a lot more time to give to interactions to be part of forums uh, because you know somewhere work is being seen by uh, you know my ccos so i feel um, so that way i feel my job has changed a bit completely we are threatened by the same things that pallavi said because this job is a little bit about um it, 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 you really need to love it so my job over these last few months have changed since the company went into you know we divided ourselves and i'm now the creative chairperson of fcb india so i feel um in my job a little bit of representing the agency and you know even on global platforms so in my work day i do have to keep some time for that uh, so that that's a little different and i completely agree with what pallavi was saying because to have passion interest because you know when you come in if it's all about salary then advertising will never stand a chance uh, with you know with the other the other possibilities so i feel to find like you know people who are in love with this is, is difficult and that is a challenge. So the only way to recruit is by constantly creating work that makes people interested in what you do for a living. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can go. Yeah, no, I think, I think all the points are very, very, uh, very, very valid and talent is absolutely like the stress there is palpable and that is completely right. I find one other thing uh, is, is quite challenging and this is for all creative leaders and I think that is consistency. I think it's, it's, a real, uh, it's a real challenge that everyone has to face in the sense that uh, the way you inspire people, the way you lead, the work you create, it can't be flash in the pan, you know. You have to do it again and again and again, you know. It's like bread, it has to be made fresh every morning. 
So I think that consistency when you're doing it at a, such a large scale, you have to do it from the day you join advertising as a writer, of course. But I'm saying when you're responsible for the product of an entire office or a couple of offices or, or, or a country, then you have to make sure that 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 bread is baked fresh every single uh, every single day and the product that comes out remains cutting edge and 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 you know creative and 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 fantastic and appreciated all the time so that to me is 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 a challenge and you really need your eye on the ball for that okay and uh, talking about indian creativity how would you define it do you think there is something particular at it that makes it immediately recognizable I think uh, uh, in in execution, I wouldn't use uh, the word over the top, but I feel that we are we are less subtle. So <laughs> to me, I think that is one of the markers. As people, we are less subtle, and uh, even so, in in the work that we work that we create, uh, and but I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of. I think that's who we are, and uh, as you know, I mean, on global platforms, Indian work is being appreciated hugely and that is because i don't think we are trying to be someone else you know hmm. yeah, like i feel my work is so idiomatic that i don't know if you take away india from my work life uh, you know I, i i don't know what kind of uh, a creative person i will be because the sensory overload of india and the causes of india and the people of india and the traditions of india is like is like the biggest bowl of crate of food you know for me i don't i don't know if uh, indian creativity is one homogeneous thing because i don't well, think you know yeah, you have a big country <laughs> yes, yes so I, i i do believe that you know sometimes it, something just strikes a chord universally so in that sense creativity at its core is universal and but of course we have such a wealth of uh, cultural context to lean on that uh, that's what makes the work uniquely indian in that sense i think uh, echoing what uh, kenas and swati have said so i do think our contexts are so diverse there's poverty and there's wealth and there's song dance and there's cricket and there's uh, dozens of languages and rituals and you have the conservatives and uh, in direct contrast the free thinkers so i don't know like i said if it's any one homogeneous thing um a lot of work can qualify as indian creativity so i don't know if it's easily recognizable in that sense or uh, there's something that you may do that will appeal to one part of the world or something that will be universally understood but yeah i guess so long as some part of it resonates with some corner of the country i suppose and what is your all time favorite indian campaign that's a tough that's a tough one tough. <laughs> there are so many very tough one <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb here and say because in my when I was very very young, I remember standing at uh, you know the abbeys at Goa Fest and clapping and getting all moist eyed and you know speaking. Of, I, I just spoke of young young talent, right? And what we and Swati spoke about the kind of work you should be doing to keep them interested and you know reel them in and make them feel like yeah I want to do that. So the piece that made me feel like that was uh, um, a film called Pakia uh, for Times of India. So oh yes I, I really remember getting goosebumps and I remember looking at the screen and all of us you know that's the thing about this industry you can be rivals you can be in competing agencies but when you see a piece of work that really hits home then you don't care whether you know it's FCB or it's Ogilvy or it's DDB right it's just great work and Pakia made me feel like that Yeah I felt like that when I used to as a child see the Garden Borelli ads you know that kind of i i mean you know the erotica the beauty the colors the music the way the woman form draped in a sari uh I, i you know and much much later i tried to recreate that with katrina kaif and slice because the sensor the memory of that piece of work every garden ad used to be like and i think they had some uh, a lovely line which said a woman expresses herself in many languages and is one of them something like that 
So, uh, I think a lot of, lot of work across agencies has really inspired me. But this didn't, ha- this didn't happen before I joined advertising. But I think after I joined advertising, one of, one brand that really caught my attention was Vodafone. I was not even associated with OGV, uh, at the time. I was in a completely different agency. But when Vodafone started creating their width of work, you know, the simplicity which they used in communicating, uh, almost everything, and the childlike charm that they use zuzus or boy and dog or you know blueberry boys i think that 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 work really sort of uh, you know drew me uh, to though i've never worked on vodafone even in ogilvy <laughs> that's the work that really made me feel really really great about being in uh, in the advertising okay and which campaigns have you been most excited by in the past 12 months and why or which is like the latest campaign that has uh, struck your attention recently sorry this is uh, outside of uh, outside of the agency that we are working in right uh, yeah in general i mean yeah yeah so there is there is one campaign i spoke about it recently also it's been done by densu webchatty it's called the unfiltered history project it's basically a lot of things that are there in the british museum have actually been got against the wishes of the countries that they belong to and the campaign is to ask uh, them to return it mm, okay yeah I, so I, you yeah. think you are going to take a tour of the museum but what you actually start taking to when you actually start taking the tour you realize that you know people from those countries pop up and they say this belongs to my country and this belongs to my country and i i think that uh, i also liked it a lot because this is something that i've read across the uh, years you know give it back to us so i think i i quite enjoyed watching that okay yeah and I, I've, I've, I've spoken about a couple of, uh, of one of the pieces I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, I love the five star nothing coins. Okay. So I thought it was really, um, so there's a core proposition. It's a chocolate. I mean, it's a basic thing that's available in every grocery store around the country. Right. So we've taken something as mundane as that. And the core proposition of the brand is do nothing. Right. So it's, it's a brand that celebrates just sitting around and being the proverbial couch potato and they've taken that simple a proposition and they've married it to something um, as brave and new age as cryptocurrency and they've created something called nothing coins you know so your nothingness generates currency i thought that was pretty neat um and i also loved and i've spoken about this piece uh, earlier as well uh, a piece for um bhima jewelers which is a, mm. a it's a it's a sensitive subject and i thought yeah. really well handled really, because uh, it's a story of a trans woman um, and how her parents give her away. And it's so relevant to the category because sometimes we fall prey to just creating pieces that are sensational, which have very little to do with the category or the brand. Um, But this one was just, I thought, just beautiful because it was spot on. It was to do with jewelry and uh, jewelry in an Indian marriage is very, very high up on the checklist. And I just thought it was a beautiful, beautiful story. I'm, I'm also a big fan of the British Museum piece of work. And I'm also, I, I enjoy the swaggy work a lot. Like, I always. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, There's it, a lot of art. Like and uh, you have all been on the jury for many awards. So, what do you think makes a campaign award worthy? Or what do you look for when you are judging? Okay, so for me, I uh, I like to now look at work that goes past awareness. I feel, uh, you know, awareness is like, is just one leg of it. So for me, uh, what, I really, like, what really works for me is something that goes beyond awareness. It brings about the activist in the viewer. So, you know, and also how sustainable is it because then you can truly know that the brand is committed to doing something for consumers so and of course I love to either cry or to laugh like any of those two things yes yeah so if um, if I were to say what I look for I I really don't look for anything but 
I think at a gut level, there are two things. One is that did I enjoy watching that piece of work? Whatever it may be for whichever category, it could be a piece of design, it could just be a layout, it could be a film. Did I enjoy uh, uh, watching that uh, piece of work? And will it do the task that, that it set out to do in a very different and the most creative way that I've seen? So there is a brief for everything, right? Whether you come up with the brief or the client gives you the brief. But how creatively have I interpreted uh, uh, the brief? I think that is what uh, I, 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 really, uh, I really look for. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Just building on what Ken has said, that personally for me, uh, you know, because you're just bombarded with so much, right? I mean, there is just so much when you're judging it's just coming at you one after the other and your eyes are glazing. So I think a very, very simple litmus test is, did you remember it? Right. So when you move, when you move from the long list to the short list and then to later awarding metal, at least I have found that the stuff that pe- that gets discussed and people are talking about is the stuff that actually stuck, struck a chord at first view. You know, like you remember looking at it in that, yeah. sea, of, uh, that sea of entries and saying, yes, this has something. Right. You remember, I, I wish I'd done that or what a great solve or, you know, like, like uh, Swati was saying so much more than just awareness. So the, the fact that it's, you know, memorable for, for the right reasons, right. Seldom do things grow on you, I feel, in a, in a jury kind of setting, because you just don't have that kind of time. So unless of course, there's a cultural context that you're missing or that we need explaining. If you look at something and see a standout, simple idea that seamlessly links to the brand and is beautifully executed. I think that's what makes a winner. Good. And uh, talking about leadership, how do you encourage the people that work with you to give out their creative best? And has this uh, changed for you with the pandemic? Has it changed the way leadership should be handled? Yes. I think Swati said it beautifully. Uh, the best way I have seen to inspire people is to champion great work and uh, to make sure that your agency is doing the kind of work that people want to do. You know, coming back to the first point, it's so difficult to find talent. Advertising is not, uh, you know, glamorous and sexy anymore. We have to lure people in back into making it that. And for that, it's very important that we create the kind of work that, that you know, the talent that we want to hire wants to do. So that is, I feel, the best way to inspire. Take the best ideas from your agency. Make sure that they come out, see the light of day. And uh, if you make your people, uh, you know, famous you you will have inspired a lot more people. Yeah, you know, advertising is best when it's at a very flat structure level because on a given day, I think the designation truly belongs to the idea, you know. The idea becomes the CCO and we're all a bunch of writers and our directors trying to be true to that idea. So um, I think in advertising leadership, I mean, I know the masculine way is, you know how even out here they say, oh, he's this one's boy and this one's girl. At least, uh, you know, the way we are as women and leaders, I think we are, uh, you know, work and the brand, you know, that particular work is at the center of it and we all rally around it. And and the way you rally around and how you support the idea truly decides whether you are a leader or not. Okay. And uh, Kaina, uh, sorry. I think the other thing that's really changed in the uh, post-COVID world is uh, the need for work-life balance. At least, I don't know, I've been seeing it all around. Like, you know, the fact yeah. that, um, you know, it's stronger than it ever was before. And our industry has a bit of this, you know, like, oh, there's no... Deadlines are what they are and timelines are crazy, right? So, but I think now if leaders don't appreciate this sooner than later, we won't have that many people left to lead, right? So I think we've already, the whole world has been looking at in the wake of the big resignation, as they're calling it, right? It's sweeping the whole world and advertising is really no different. I think uh, like we've already discussed, attrition is what it is. And in the wake of a post-COVID world where people have realized that life is transient, right? I mean, that's something all of us woke up to right with the rude shock last couple of years and people are like is this what i want to keep doing right so very very strongly echo what kenas and swati have both said the work has to be worth it every now and again you want to be looking at the work that your agency is putting out and saying i wish i had done that i'm glad i'm in this business 
and there has to be leaders have to have a little more empathy a little more flexibility and a little more fight in them to give people the right to you know live outside of work as well hmm. and uh, kainas in the can creativity report of the decade published in 2020 your brand itc savlon's healthy hands chopstick features as iconic work of the decade can you tell us about this campaign yeah so i think uh, it's it's i think uh, I think uh, I can't talk about this campaign. We were talking about the guy who thought about it. His name is Mahesh Shambhalia, and the only reason he could come up with that idea is because he studied in a school with chalks. And we often talk about things like diversity and inclusion and getting people from different backgrounds into your agency. And to me, that particular case study was really a living example of that. because he had studied in a school where he actually used a slate and a chalk he came from a small town he studied there and uh, you know that's where the idea came from and he he went and he actually spoke to his friends at iit and he figured out whether it's feasible to do it or not uh, our clients are at saitc savlon i mean i cannot praise them enough pallavi also works with them they are really really fantastic bunch of people they did serious r and d on it and they made sure that you know the chalk comes out as we imagined it to the point that it's even food grade approved you know suppose a kid puts it in his mouth what happens then mm -hmm. it's fine you know nothing will happen to uh, him other than uh, you know a bit of calcium going inside so i think that uh, that that of course all of the process and all of the wins but i feel that giving people chance from uh, people who you wouldn't otherwise give a chance to for example uh when this boy came came he came to portfolio night and his portfolio was rejected by a lot of people and kino my ex boss he hired him actually i didn't hire him he hired him and he said that i hired this guy and uh, you know uh, i put him in your team and he started working with us and he he came up with this so i i just feel everybody should should really you know be open minded and hire as many diverse people as you can Good and Palavi, among many creative awards that you won, you were also the recipient of the best ad screenplay play at the prestigious 2015 Dada Chef Falk Film Festival. Can you tell us about this award? Yeah, this was actually uh, a piece that we did for Birla Sun Life Insurance. Today it's Aditya Birla Capital, but back in the day the companies hadn't merged. um and it was basically we've been speaking about indian creativity so here again there was a cultural insight at play um, a lot of us believe very very strongly in destiny and the role it plays in our lives and uh, more often than not you will find people resigning themselves to it in some shape or form and that's uh, pretty much what sparked off this idea it was a long format film um 8 years ago they weren't that popular um and the client actually was super brave because they ran the entire i mean they 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 really put their money where their mouth, mouth is we gave them a 3 minute edit they ran it on television um and they couldn't run it many times because you know television rates are what they are but the few times that they did run it um what it did for the brand was remarkable uh people didn't have to see the same they didn't have to hammer home the message 10 times round and 25 times round and they didn't have to get uh, you know people to watch it and ham uh, you know keep uh, playing it ad nauseum until they uh, people had it coming out of their ears so it was just a very very simple story about a young um, autistic child and his single uh, dad because they um, uh, uh, the child lost his mom at a young age and we sort of spanned uh, 15 years in the life of this child and um, it was just a simple story about this uh, father and him looking after the son and uh, insurance actually had a very very um it had a role to play but it wasn't in your face it was pretty much the trampoline the, the security net that lies at the you know be mm. beneath all of us in fact and allows us to bounce back so i think what really worked for it and re really made it resonate with people was that we didn't we didn't push uh, in a category like finance which is full of jargon and full of hard sell and full of complexity we demystified and i think that's what really worked for it great and uh, swati your campaign times out and proud classifies for the times of india was rewarded at garrity awards can you tell us about it and how you came up with the idea yeah i think uh, again it was um 
in Bombay office, there was a boy called Jason, and he said that I have a very small idea. It's uh, for the classifieds, and uh, why can't we use the classified column, which is, you know, like the earlier generations, that would be a very important page in the newspaper, but now people just, oh, you know, even though in India, it's still important because every time you're changing name or you're looking for, um, you know, a bride or a groom or you still have it, but it's just that the new readers don't go there. And I remember seeing that idea and knowing that it's not just, it's not just for the classifieds. This is something that can become much bigger. And uh, I remember I came out of that meeting and I called up the client and they were excited. They said, okay, we never thought of doing anything on the classifieds. You know, it's a dead piece uh, in the newspaper. But the whole thing was that that dead part of the newspaper became like alive with stories and it's an incredible campaign. Great. And let's go with the last question because I know you're all very busy. So what kind of campaigns or topics would you like to see rewarded this year at Creative Festivals? Okay, I'll see. You know, I have been judging, um, uh, like last year, I, I judged everything from the N80, from one show to uh, Garrity or, um, uh, you know, Laurie's or a Can. And uh, there was this one new thing that, I'm, I feel a little upset about, and I don't think that is the right way to go. I see a lot of work, which is just a brand gets in touch with an artist who's already doing that work, and you just pick it up for a brand, and then you enter it, you know? So it could be a filmmaker who's already, you know, on Kickstarter, put up his idea of a film, people have put in money, the film has started being shot. And somewhere as a brand, you reach out to him and then you take that work. I feel work that happens in an agency is the work that should be entered, you know? So I find that kind of just lifting a half cooked piece and then owning it, I, for me, that doesn't seem so right. You know, because we think that scam is only when you scam a brand or when you scam, uh, you know, where, you, where the brand doesn't exist or the work doesn't exist. But sometimes if the creative team doesn't exist, for me, that's scam too. Hmm. I think for me, uh, you know, years ago, maybe I think it was 2012 when Dove Beauty sketches had uh, come out. When I had first seen it, these social experiments and all were not like as rampant as they are now. And I was like, I was so fascinated by it because I, you could not really classify it. You know, yes, it was an experiment, but it was also a film and, you know, it was also outdoor and it was so many things. It changed the way people started approaching solutions. It is after dark beauty sketches that a lot of social experiments took place and a lot of stuff happened. I would love to see the next breakthrough like that, you know, something that makes me feel like that. Like when I had seen it years ago, I genuinely felt that, you know, what a great way to, to, to drive, home this, uh, drive home this message. And I would love to see the, the next piece that makes me feel like that. In the wake of COVID, Two or three things, actually. I think work that makes me laugh, I'd love to see, because I think God knows we could all use a little bit of laughter to it after these last two years. Uh, work that revives our economy, because, you know, really work that sells rather than just, you know, there's, there's you can do a conversation, um, you can be a conversation starter, you can be a change maker, but advertising's core job is to sell. And again, a lot of economies in the world need are in dire need of a boost. So ads that really, I mean, campaigns that actually go out there and make people feel all good and consumery all over again, I think would be good to see. All and consumery, I like that word. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for this Garrity Talk. Uh, thanks for your time. And I wish you all the best for all the projects that you carry on for this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.